Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody, and welcome today's, to today's webinar, Next Level Launch, GData Portable Admin-Based Cloud Solution, including Multi-Tenancy, Beast, and AMSI. Well, this is quite a long title, and you'll see in a couple of minutes, uh, minutes what's behind it. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Mirko Radicic. I'm working as a pre-sales consultant for GData and I'm very proud to be able to present our latest um, technologies today to you. Before we get started, let's have a quick look at our campus uh, in Germany. As you all know, um, GData is a product from Germany. It is being developed in Germany. And um, well, this is also, you see our campus on the upper left-hand uh, corner. This is also um, where we got started in 1985. Um, we had like uh, two little rooms up there. Um, around uh, six, seven years ago, we were able to uh, purchase this campus. So um, this is all ours now. And um, well, it's a big, big advantage because we are all under one roof. Um, uh, everybody is working there, development, uh, QA, uh, sales, uh, marketing, and of course, our uh, renowned uh, GData service. And um, well, this is extremely convenient uh, since, um, well, should you have a problem, you can just go uh, up to see your colleagues and discuss it with them. To be honest, uh, the building is uh, rather empty right now. We are still um, working from our home offices. Uh, due to the uh, current situation. Well, once we have purchased, uh, we, we purchased this building in uh, 2014, we renovated it and uh, you can see a couple of pictures from inside. So it's a really uh, modern and uh, also very comfortable working environment. It even features its own uh, canteen. So it's, it's um, really, um, yeah, quite interesting and also, uh, quite motivating to be working in this building at the GData campus. Yeah, before we get started with the webinar, um, maybe some uh, technical uh, suggestions. Um, let's just have a quick look. Um, as you have, might have realized, you are all muted. Uh, the reason for that is that, uh, again, today many, many people have joined our webinar. Uh, nevertheless, we would love to have you join the webinar. So I would encourage you to ask questions. Uh, you can just do it by clicking on the question panel. Uh, then this little window should open and the uh, question should pop up here on my screen. And then I will either uh, answer this uh, question during the webinar towards the end or towards the end of the webinar. Okay. Well, today uh, we um, want to focus um, on a couple of points. Uh, here's our agenda. Um, once again, I would like to explain the concept of multi-tenancy. Uh, then as a next point, um, I want to focus on managed services. We have uh, two different ways to be able to um, have uh, managed services served to our customers. Uh, once it can be done self-hosted, and uh, the second is in the cloud. Uh, we have a strong partner behind it. It's Microsoft Asia. And before we get to the live demo uh, as our fifth point, I would still, um, yeah, once again, focus on our latest protection technologies, Beast and AMSI. And uh, I'll also show how they work in the live demonstration. 
Okay, uh, here we have a uh, point one, multi-tenancy. What's behind it? Uh, what does it look like? Um, yeah, basically, um, as you can see here, in the past, uh, in order to be able to serve our customers, uh, and you see the customers down here, three different customers, the partner up here, um, it was necessary to have a management server on the customer side and then on uh, um, all the devices, the customer's devices could connect to the customer's management server. And uh, we had a so-called master admin, so a US partner, if you wanted to manage your customer's management servers, you would have to use the master admin uh, to connect all these different management uh, servers together in one console. Um, this has uh, changed um, with our um, GData endpoint security um, hosted version. Uh, and let's have a look uh, what this could look like. Uh, basically, uh, what you can do as a partner, you can just host the management server uh, either in, yeah, maybe in your own office or if you already have a data center in your own data center. And then you can uh, basically uh, service multiple customers or with one management server, you can create uh, several tenants and then your customers. Uh, which, well, each customer basically is one tenant. Your customer can then um, connect uh, to your management server and you will then see it uh, also uh, under one console. Of course, what you can also do is if you have a data center, uh, put this management server in your data center and uh, basically the structure is then the same, uh, except that your server would be in a, in a management server or a rented cloud or anything like that and not uh, in, in your office directly. Um, there's uh, a third option, and uh, this is uh, the option that we basically would like to focus on today. And this, the third option is that you use uh, GData managed endpoint security in the cloud. Um, and uh, yeah, I have a little uh, picture here that can better explain how it works. Um, don't get confused. You have uh, the customers here on the right side, different customers. Uh, you are basically the partner. Um, what we from uh, GData provide is uh, signature and program updates. Of course, also the technical support as can be seen here in the upper right hand corner. Uh, we provide a marketing support for you, the managed service uh, partner. Uh, we of course also provide the licenses. Interesting is that the hardware, um, the software licenses for Windows, for SQL Server and so on, they're all in the cloud. Uh, so there is no need for you as partner to purchase a server, to purchase any hardware, to purchase any uh, software licenses, anywhere, anything. Uh, you're basically ready to go and I'll show you in our live demonstration how easy it actually is to set up such a configuration. So basically you're ready to go from the one day to the other and uh, then you're ready to serve your customer uh, with uh, endpoint uh, security services. Um, yeah, how it basically works is that you would get access to our GData Action Center, um, the server information and also the license you will find in this Action Center. Um, and you see uh, at uh, the click of a button, the server will be create, created. Uh, you see uh, here in the screenshot, it's uh, still creating. And uh, once it's done, you will be provided with the URL. The URL is important so that you uh, can connect to the server. And of course, um, the administration ID and the password, which will allow you to log on to the server. How this works in detail, uh, once again, uh, I would like to show to you in the uh, fifth part towards the end of the webinar, we will simply have a live demonstration. Um, we at GData, we believe in live demonstrations. So um, we have these PowerPoints here just for you to understand the basic concept. And in the live demonstration, you can actually see how it works. And I believe, I personally believe this will also will be the most interesting part of this um, of this webinar today.
Okay, uh, let's just uh, once again uh, sum up what's uh, the most interesting part. If you have your solution hosted uh, for you as a partner, there's no hardware purchase necessary. Also, the end customer doesn't need to purchase any special hardware. Um, no need to um, purchase uh, licenses or the like. The maintenance is included. Uh, we take care of the maintenance concerning the server, the updates, uh, uh, and the like and of course we also will automatically scale up the infrastructure anytime meaning the more customers you get maybe uh, you need more memory or more cpu cores uh, we will automatically do this at no extra cost for you so this is also another big advantage for you um, if you're utilizing these uh, gdata and the cloud services and finally of course high availability is guaranteed um, as uh, we are working together with Microsoft here as partner. Um, this is a very uh, safe and also stable uh, offering that we have in the cloud. So it's uh, quite reliable. Um, well, let's have a quick look at our GData managed endpoint security technologies. Um, as you can see here in the past 10 years, uh, we have um, created and developed um, some very interesting proactive modules. Um, we basically started up in 1987 with a signature-based detection. And uh, then yeah, in the past 10, 15 years, we have added the behavior blocker, cloud protection, Vanguard, keylogger protection, exploit protection, and the like. Um, yeah, interesting and uh, mind-throwing was already our deep ray technology. Um, which helped us um, detect Emotet, for example. Our customers have been all very, very uh, safe. We have hardly any Emotet infections reported uh, from our customers. And uh, the latest development uh, basically is our BEAST module. There have been many partners and customers uh, contacting me and asking me, how does BEAST actually work? And uh, this is also the reason why I uh, thought it might be interesting to once explain to you how BEAST actually um, works. Uh, Beast has uh, been added to our product around about one year ago. It has been optimized um, during um, uh, the course of last year. And in fact, in uh, October of last year, uh, fall, we actually also hooked it up to our cloud and uh, how this actually works and how what this means, I would like uh, to explain it to you in our next uh, slides here. Um, when Beast was released, I uh, discussed the matter with our developers and uh, they explained to me how it works in two to three hours. Um, very mathematical, um, very inter interesting. We have huge matrices there. Um, we are working with a met uh, uh, vectors and so on. And um, well, after two or three hours, I uh, finally got that point. And um, I then wondered myself, okay, um, how do I explain this to our partners and customers? Uh, how, how, the, how is this going to work? And uh, luckily we have um, a marketing department and the marketing department had a splendid idea. They came up with a pirate story and um, yeah, I would like to um, explain this uh, pirate story to you because it really helps us to uh, understand how Beast works. So the pirate is already coming around the corner. There he is. And I suggest in the couple of uh, or in the next couple of minutes you can just relax lean back and just have a look at this pirate story and um, it will really help you to uh, quite easily understand how our beast solution actually works and helps you and your customers to uh, protect their IT installations okay let's get started with a pirate story well the pirate story brings us uh, to the internet ocean and in the Internet Ocean, we have a couple of islands, as you can see. Um, there's a Windows island in the center. Um, there's also an unknown island here in the upper left-hand corner. Well, in the ocean, out in the ocean, it also has a ship. Here it's the MSS Outlook. Uh, we have a port, the port temp file. Uh, yeah, most certainly there's also a cave 
uh, on this island. It's called the Registry Cave. And uh, we also have an armory where all the weapons are stored. Yeah, and the boss, uh, the chief of the island, is uh, basically sitting in his governor mansion. And um, yeah, well, this is also where all the assets are. Yeah, in this uh, little game, um, we actually want to start uh, playing basic uh, behavior detector. Uh, how does a basic uh, behavior detector work? A basic average behavior detector is basically having a look at one process at a time. And um, well, while the process is ongoing, it has to decide whether this process is malicious or not. And uh, we will start playing a basic behavior detector now. And uh, what's happening in our first process here is that the MSS Outlook is uh, going towards port temp file. It wants to deliver goods. And now we, as a um, yeah, basic old fashioned behavior detector, need to decide is there any danger uh, for the island, for the people on the island, for the governor? Um, well, if the MSS Outlook uh, basically delivers good to the island. Um, and we would say, no, this is actually uh, quite common, uh, nothing special with it, no danger. Um, so we have the MSS Outlook proceed to deliver goods to the island. Now let's have a look at another uh, process here. Uh, we see an unknown vessel, vessel coming from an unknown island. Uh, it's approaching Windows Island and um, yeah, once again, as a traditional uh, behavior detector, just looking at this very uh, one process, uh, we again wouldn't see any danger of a uh, ship having approached Windows Island. And let's have a look at a third process. Um, the third process here is that we have a soldier. He's carrying weapons and he is coming from the armory and um, approaching the governor mansion. Mm. And um, well, by having a look at this very process, it's already becoming a little bit tricky um, because uh, on the one hand, the soldier is uh, carrying weapons, he's armed basically, and um, yeah, he could do some harm to the governor. But on the other hand, um, maybe his comrade is um, off duty and uh, it's now up to him to guard the governor. And I think this is already a very good example explaining how difficult uh, for a behavior detector it is to decide whether a process is good or malicious uh, just by having the information of one isolated process. In this case, uh, we, sh we should decide to just have the soldier approach the governor mentioned because um, we want to make sure that the governor is guarded at all times. But again, it's a little bit risky. Um, well, finally, um, what this demonstration is all about, it's uh, about BEAST, our latest technology and uh, our latest uh, behavior detector. Um, and I would like to show to you how this behavior detector works and how it distinguishes itself from a common behavior detector. OK, let's start over. Um, once again, Microsoft Outlook, uh, MSS Outlook, sorry, the vessel is approaching port temp file. And uh, now we have to, um, well, we don't really have to do anything because what our beast behavior detector is capable of doing, he can first monitor uh, various processes and later decide whether this chain of processes means any danger in this case for the island. So at this stage, uh, no decision is necessary. So the MSS Outlook is simply approaching port temp file. It's uh, delivering goods. Uh, well, in the port, we also have some dock workers. And uh, what do they do? Well, they are curious what's inside the boxes. So they simply open up one of these boxes. Out of the box, um, yeah, there comes a bird and the bird is flying towards an unknown island. And uh, shortly thereafter, a ship, an unknown vessel 
um, is coming from the unknown island approaching Windows Island. However, it's not going to the port. It's um, yeah, basically just stopping uh, short at the beach and uh, all the sailors, um, they go towards Windows Island. They, the next step, hide in the registry cave. They wait until it becomes dark. In the next step, they go towards the armory. Uh, they take all the weapons, they arm themselves, and now they are approaching the governor mansion. And this is the point where Beast says, okay, we got to stop it. There's something going on. And uh, this actually means danger for the governor, for the island, and of course, all the assets. And I think it's quite obvious that by having a look at the whole chain and uh, only later have to decide whether there is some danger, it's much, much easier and um, can also be um, much more precise uh, to uh, decide whether there is um, danger or whether this is uh, something malicious going on or not. Um, well, of course, we as GData, we are not a travel agency, so we are not out in the ocean uh, sailing around the islands. Uh, we are still um, on the computers uh, and uh, we are protecting these with Beast. So what would you find on a computer? Well, what you have there basically is uh, Microsoft Outlook. Um, and what do you do with Microsoft Outlook every day? Of course, you do receive emails. Some of these emails also have attachments uh, and some of these attachments have also zip files attached to them. Sometimes it's necessary to uh, have a look into one of these uh, zip files. So you basically make a double click and in the next step, um, the file inside the zip file is um, being written to the temp folder. Uh, in this uh, case, it's an executable file, which is then automatically being executed. It's contacting an unknown server on the internet. Uh, from this unknown server, an executable is being downloaded. Uh, as a next step, uh, something is written uh, to the registry. An auto start access is created. Uh, then a PowerShell script is executed, which then is about to attack the computer and the digital assets. And this is also the point where um, Beast at the latest realizes that something malicious is going on on the computer and uh, therefore will uh, stop this process chain. Since we have uh, hooked up Beast with our uh, GData cloud, um, Beast also got uh, somewhat smarter. Um, Beast has a little database, a little da graph database. So it basically can keep track of all these uh, various uh, processes, um, but it also can uh, collect, uh, for example, the hash of the file in the temp folder and also the IP address of this unknown server um, here out in the internet. Um, and once Beast realizes that here in the uh, latest step, in the final step, it's uh, this process chain leads to attacking the computer. It can uh, stop the latest process here, but what it also will do, it will send the IP address of this unknown server to our cloud servers. Uh, it will blacklist it and also the hash of this temp file of this file in the temp folder will be sent to our cloud server to be blacklisted. So what does this mean for all of uh, the other customers? It basically means that uh, once this process chain is being executed, um, Beast will immediately send the data to the cloud. And it basically means that from this step on, all further customers are uh, also protected because um, the file that are, is here in the temp folder cannot be executed anymore. Um, we are checking um, whether this uh, file that's about to be executed is in the cloud, whether it's blacklisted, and if this hash is blacklisted, an execution here is not possible. Further, also, if any other uh, computer is trying to access this unknown server uh, in the internet, 
um, basically as the IP address also got blacklisted, it's not possible. Since this is not possible, this executable cannot be downloaded and the computers cannot be attacked. So this is really a uh, quite a smart process, which helps um, to bring our computers uh, up to the next step, the safety level up to the next step, and uh, has already proven to be uh, very efficient and also extremely effective. Of course, there is another um, security feature that we have introduced um, uh, when we released uh, our version 15 a couple of months ago. And um, what I'm addressing here is the AMSI anti-malware scan interface. The AMSI interface is available uh, by Microsoft um, starting with Windows 10 and uh, Windows Server 2016. And uh, through the interface, uh, we are actually capable of having a look um, into uh, various uh, processes regarding scripts. So we can uh, monitor scripts. Um, why do we do this or why is this important? That's quite easy. Uh, one of the latest attack vectors is basically an attack uh, by fileless malware. What is fileless malware? Well, let me explain it to you this way. Um, Basically, there is the option of having a malware code put into a script. Once the script is being executed, uh, we have the malware code inside the script compiled. So it's not a program yet, but once the script is being run, the malware code is being compiled. Therefore, it becomes a malware program, a malicious program that then can attack your computer. Um, why is it different from all of the other malware uh, that is out there? Well, it's never actually written to the computer. So it's never being written to the hard disk uh, or any um, yeah, file, basically. It stays in the memory um, and it's in the memory as long as the script is being executed. Um, with the help of the AMSI interface, well, we basically uh, can have a look. Uh, we can monitor what's going on while the script is being executed. And uh, if you see that we have a malicious a file being compiled, we will simply stop the script. And um, yeah, you see the little PowerShell window in the lower right hand corner. Uh, this is basically what it looks like. And I will also be more than happy to show you in our live demonstration in a couple of minutes how this actually works and what it looks like. Of course, the AMSI interface is not only available for the PowerShell, it's also available for many, many other scripts. Uh, you see them listed here on the left hand side. Uh, even uh, in Office 365, we sometimes have uh, scripts and we can also monitor these scripts. Okay, well, let's say this is enough with the PowerPoint um, introduction and I would uh, love to now uh, switch to the live demonstration and um, show you how it actually works. And um, I have uh, basically uh, prepared for you uh, virtual machine. I'm now switching to this uh, virtual machine right here. And um, so let's uh, basically uh, get started. Um, what I have prepared here at once is my uh, local GData management server. Um, well, in the beginning, I showed to you that it's quite possible to basically host uh, the multi-tenancy or the managed service option by yourself. So let's think this is one of the servers that I have in my basement and I now want to provide um, managed services to my customers. So I have just uh, installed um, this solution on my site. And uh, let me just uh, log in here. In a second step, and I'll show this to you in just a couple of minutes, I'll show to you how you can basically access your server in the cloud uh, based on Asia. Um, the second option that I've uh, just explained to you in the beginning, but let's have a quick look here at um, this installation. So let's say this is a, a server here that you basically have in your uh, basement. And the question now is how can you provide 
uh, managed services uh, to your customers. This is quite easy. Uh, you just set up the server, you will get a managed services license uh, from our team at GData. And then you're already uh, ready to go and to add some customers. Of course, you need to make sure that uh, the IP address of this uh, self-hosted management server is publicly available on the internet. Um, that's of course uh, very important. Otherwise, your customers cannot have access to your management server. And then if you have a new customer, you can simply go to our tenant management, click on the plus sign, and uh, yeah, let's have a, what, what could we do? Uh, let's have a bike, bike factory, for example. And uh, yeah, that's my customer, Bike Factory Inc., for example. Um, automatically, we have a unique identifier created here. I can then also add an administrator and I will do it immediately. So I call this, um, Administrator, administrator bike admin. Um, I can then decide whether this administrator should have read or read and write access. If he only has read access, he is not able to adjust any settings. He can just uh, check um, the logs, for example, see how many computers there are in his tenant and so on, whether he had some incidents, but he cannot uh, make any adjustments. If he has also write access, he will then also be able to uh, make changes, apply changes to his settings. Okay. Okay. Bike admin it is. Oh, I set a password here. Okay. And click the OK button. Can, uh, yeah, and that's actually already it. And as you can see here, the bike factory has been added. And if I go back to my client pane, I will see here that the bike factory is on top. And now I'm actually already uh, ready to go and to add some clients. How do I do this? I will go here to organization, manage installation packages. Then I click on the plus sign. Now, this is important. I have to choose the tenant here. Now, the tenant in this case, will be a bike factory. And uh, yeah, I have the server here and I can click OK. And now the um, client package is being generated. And, and then in a minute, I will be ready to basically roll out the client package to all of the computers and clients on the customer side. And they will automatically end up in the right tenant. Uh, that is the tenant of the bike factory. Okay. Um, what's interesting now for the, for the administrator on the side of the bike factory, you can just simply log on. Uh, I'll start it again here. Let's have a look. And um, switch to integrated authentication. I call the administrator, I think, bike admin. I will provide him with a password. And then the administrator of the bike factory can log on. Interestingly, of course, the administrator of the bike factory can only see his own tenant. So of course, he is not able to see the tenants of all the other uh, of all of your other customers that you're monitoring, only just the bike factory, which is of course very important and crucial, um, but he is still on your management server. Yeah, What you see here is basically the management server that you're hosting. And uh, well, once the administrator would install the client on his side, they would automatically end up here and uh, the administrator would then able to, for example, check and adjust uh, the settings um, for his computers. So let me take you back once again, you as partner, you will be able to see all of the tenants. You will have a nice overview. Uh, I switch back here to Windows authentication, enter my password. And as you can see here, 
we have all of the tenants here on the left hand side. Maybe in the meantime, just as a quick reminder for all of you that have joined in the meantime, um, you have been muted, so you cannot directly uh, ask questions, but you're more than welcome to type your questions into the question pane. There is a part in your uh, webinar management where you can enter questions and the questions will then pop up here on my screen and I'll be happy to answer these questions to you during the course of the webinar. Okay, well, this is of course, uh, yeah, as you can see here, you have all the tenants on the left hand side. Uh, I have already, uh, besides the bike factory, um, added a couple of other companies. There is, for example, the dentist, there is the Ford Auburn Car Sales Co. and so on and so forth. Fourth, um, so various customers I can already monitor here and uh, the customers themselves, if they log on to the GData management server, the GData administrator, um, they will only be able to monitor their very own uh, tenant. Yeah, as we have discussed in our uh, PowerPoint presentation, there is of course another option. Uh, we have seen this and that's the option of having a GData in the cloud. So without any necessity to actually, um, yeah, uh, purchase a server, purchase a license, setting all this up, maintaining it and so on. Um, basically, you can just apply for our managed service product in the in the cloud. It's it's based on Asia. How it works is that um, you will get um, the access data through our action center. I think I have so shown you the uh, uh, a screenshot in the PowerPoint uh, um, slide. And uh, now I would like to demonstrate you in a live demonstration how you can then, once you have received your credentials, access GData in the cloud. Um, you have to do a one further step and I'll show you how to do this. You basically just have to go uh, to the GData uh, website. And let's just go to gdatasoftware.com. And uh, from here, we'll just go to the download section. And in the download section in tools, uh, you basically have the GData portable admin launcher. You can download it. This is basically the GData administrator. Since you don't have any installations on your side, this is uh, your tool, the most important tool, which will enable you to access a GData in the cloud. Let me show you here. I have already downloaded it and I'll uh, start it right here. Yeah. Once you have started this, you can basically choose, of course, the language of your liking. You can then add the plus button. Once you have added the plus button, you uh, uh, should just add the URL that you have uh, received from us and you can uh, choose uh, the server name. In this case, I have chosen GData in the cloud. You see also the URL I got, I put it in here. And once you have added the information, you can just click on add server info. Once that is done, you start it up. I do it right here. So the administrator is started. Let's just wait for a second. Yeah, and there we are already. So now I only need to put in my credentials. Need to change to integrated authentication. Then I will copy and paste my username, which has been provided by GData in the Action Center. And of course, my highly complicated and safe password. So that's why I use copy and paste. And let's see if it works. We are now actually logging on to the cloud. So once again, um, no installation was necessary. Uh, it's all done in the background. Uh, you see I'm starting this up for the first time. So I have the server setup wizard and here we are already. So the look and feel is exactly the same. Uh, currently I of course don't have, uh, don't have any data available here. 
um, because I haven't added any clients yet. So once I have the first customer, I can just go here on the management server and um, yeah, go to tenant management. And here I can add my first tenant. Okay. And uh, let's say my first ten tenant is St. Mary's Hospital. Hospitals are very important nowadays. Um, the unique identifier, I will just call it Mary. Okay, and I'll add an administrator, admin Mary. And uh, yeah, I need to set a password, right? I need to confirm it. And I can put a description here. Usually I like to use a customer reference oh, like this, because this customer reference will show up on your bill. Um, so one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, once you decide to become a managed service partner, uh, you will get a special license from GData. And this license will be built on a monthly basis. So we will just check on a monthly basis how many computers you're serving with managed services. And you will receive an invoice based on how many computers you have used the same month. Yeah. So let's just add it right here. And then of course this customer reference number will show up on the invoice. So that's why it's uh, recommended to just add the, uh, the relevant reference here. So the next step uh, I can then do is I um, can go back. See, we have added St. Mary's Hospital. It's showing up here. I can go to manage installation packages and yeah, I can now choose the tenant. It will be St. Mary's Hospital. Choose the language. Yeah, you see the URL to my management server. This is important so that the client in the end knows what management server to contact. So it's this one in the, in the cloud. And um, yeah, I just click on OK and it's now being generated and then I can directly download it it download it on the client side. Now I click OK. And uh, let's let's just um, log on. Let's just see if uh, pretend we are now the administrator on the side of the hospital and we want to manage our GData uh, cloud solution. We again would download this GData portable administrator from our download side. Um, yeah, you would have to provide your customer with the URL and of course the credentials we have just created. So I started up once again. And this, I think, I called the administrator Mary admin. And I will now log on as the administrator on the customer side. Uh, maybe I forgot the password. Yeah. Ah, da, 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 da. Let's see. I seem to have gotten mixed up here. I think uh, maybe I did it the other way, right? Let's see. Yeah, that looks much better here. Um, I don't know, whenever you're doing demonstrations, things like that happen, but I got it figured out. Okay, glad I did. Well, once again, now I have logged on as the administrator on the customer side. And of course, I only see here now St. Mary's Hospital. So I just see my a very own uh, clients and of course uh, I don't see much more because I haven't added any um, any uh, uh, clients I haven't installed the data client on my computers yet 
um, but basically what I could do, I could just uh, go on this um, installation package site. Uh, I've just started the generation of the package, so it's not done yet. But once uh, um, it had, has been generated, I can simply download the GData client installation package from here and then start rolling this out to my network, installing it on my computers. And um, yeah, as you can see, um, basically you as partner, but also uh, the customers are ready to go just within minutes. So uh, no further installation necessary. You just quickly download our GData portable administrator and um, yeah, then uh, with the credentials, you got the, the URL, the user ID and the password, you can simply log on and you're ready to go. And of course, um, there's no hassle of uh, taking care of the maintenance of any servers, installation, software maintenance, or the like. This is all being taken care of from our side. Yeah, in the meantime, I uh, have received a question here and I would like to address this question. The question is whether you can make use of various licenses um, uh, with GData managed services. Uh, the question here is if I have five or six uh, customers and uh, I have sold these uh, five or six customers uh, let's say GData endpoint licenses with 15 computers each. How do I add them to my managed services console? Um, I have to say this is not uh, the way it's meant to be. What you would do as a partner, you would uh, purchase uh, one um, managed uh, service license. Uh, you would then add it to your installation. And once you have added it to your installation, you can just at the customers roll out the clients and depending on how many um, clients gdata installations your customers use they will be built they will be invoiced on a monthly basis let's say you have customer a and customer a has installed this month uh, let's say 15 computers so he will in the end be be, be invoiced for these 15 computers if he has 18 computers in the next month, the next month he will be um, invoiced for 18 computers. If he is going back to 12 computers the month thereafter, he will only be invoiced for 12 computers. So this is a very uh, dynamic way of invoicing and uh, so therefore the customer is just paying what he actually needs, what he's actually making use of. And um, therefore there is no hassle of uh, purchasing licenses, uh, selling licenses, renewing licenses. Um, this is being paid as you go basically on a monthly basis. So this is also a very modern, modern approach. Yeah, this was my presentation concerning or regarding the URL cloud. Um, I would like to um, once again address maybe, and I have shown you uh, our latest uh, security technologies a couple of minutes ago, and I think we have 10 minutes left. I would just like to show you, and I'm logging on to my on-site administrator here. Once again, as you see, the log and look and feel is uh, simply the same as with the cloud solution. So um, there's nothing you have to learn. It's basically identical. And what I would like to do, I would like um, to execute here um, a demonstration malware, which will trigger my beast module. So I triggered it now, I executed it here. So this is the malware, something is going on on my computer. And let's see whether we will have a detection here. If you're lucky, we do. Um, let's see, let's wait. Um, something is going on. And yeah, you see a detection here. So that's actually quite typical, nothing new there. You just simply have a detection on your computer and you have this message here. But let's have a look and let's simply see what this actually uh, looks like here. If we go into the logs, I acknowledge it here, and we go into the logs of our management server. Let me just uh, choose here my very own client. And um, yeah, as you know, it always takes a couple of minutes 
until um, these incidents show up here on my screen in the log file section. And um, yeah, we can just uh, wait a little bit until it actually um, becomes uh, visible here. And then we can see and understand how detailed uh, such an attack, once it has been detected by our beast module, is actually documented here in our log section. Yeah, let's wait, maybe it's showing up and you see here it is, 2nd of January, 1048, Beast Behavior Monitoring. And uh, this is the file I executed. If I do a double click on this entry, I now see here suspicious, suspicious application is telling me um, what has actually been detected. Now the name actually isn't telling me much. Uh, and I think this is a long time, year old problem. Um, if I have detections on my computer, there are some cryptic names there. I sometimes can Google to gather some further information, but I usually don't know much about what was actually going on on my computer. And here with Beast, you suddenly, certainly, and suddenly also you have this um, very detailed information. So you actually see what file had has been executed in the beginning. You see that there has been an auto start entry or an auto start exit created and also an entry uh, in the registry has been created, uh, has been added to the registry, this registry key. So this is actually for the first time giving you a very precise and detailed information what has been going on during this malware attack on your computer. As you can see up here, of course, all these files have already been quarantined. So that means there is no danger for your computer, for your network, for your installation at this time. But this is for the first time actually giving you the information that you want, that you need, the transparency, so that you actually know what's going on on your computer. Um, the other um, safety feature I demonstrated to you is the AMSI Morve interface. And um, yeah, once again, I have a sample here. I have a PowerPoint script and I will just execute it here. I will run it with PowerShell. And um, once again, there is now malicious code inside the script. It's, there is already a warning asking me, do you really want to execute this uh, PowerShell script? And once this PowerShell script is being executed, there will be some code inside um, that will then be compiled to become actually uh, some malicious malware attacking the computer. And uh, now I will just say yes, why, here it is. And um, yeah, now you see once it has been executed, uh, we already have the pop-up and um, the shell has been uh, stopped. So it is not uh, actually capable of attacking the computer. This is also, of course, a very, very important um, safety future for your computers. Okay. Yeah, this uh, brings us uh, to the end of our uh, webinar today. If there are not any further questions, <clears throat> I think we have had a look at this various safety features today. Um, you have been able to see how easy it actually is with our admin launcher that needs to be downloaded once you have the credentials to access your GData installation in the cloud. So without having uh, the hassle of actually uh, purchasing any hardware, software licenses and the like, you can simply access uh, this um, GData installation in the cloud and start providing services to, the, to your customers once the client package has been um, has been uh, is, is ready, it can be rolled out on your customer side and you're basically ready to go. So um, no hassle at all. Yeah, well, thank you everybody for joining today. Uh, let us have a look uh, once again at our uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation here towards the end. Um, there will be some further webinars coming up in March and April. Um, there's a little spoiler here. Maybe you can already mark this uh, appointment in your calendars. And uh, most certainly, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing you then. Uh, I hope it has been a profitable um, demonstration and presentation today. 
and uh, I hope I could uh, provide you with the information that you uh, expected and required. Uh, once again, you also find our email address down here, presales.gdata.de. Should you have any further questions, feel free to contact us and we are most certainly willing to help you out. Um, for the next 10 minutes, I will also be monitoring um, the uh, chat window, the question pane. So if you should have any further questions, feel free to um, type them in into the pane, into the, the uh, question, uh, question module of uh, GoToWebinar, and I'll be happy uh, to be able to answer those to you. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, take good care and hope uh, you will join next time. Bye-bye.